everybody. My name is Martina. I'm Certified Holistic Nutritionist. And in today's video, we're going to be covering the topic of trans fatty acids or trans fats. In my last video, I mentioned that this is a special category that requires a different attention. So let's cover the trans fatty acids. Now, they, in the nature, they're occurring in very small amount in animal products, in meat and dairy and fish. And that is only because they are being created by the gut bacteria of the animals. They are very similar to the structure of so-called healthy fats, which we find in the nuts and seeds and, uh, and, and uh, avocado, for example, and olives, but they are not identical. And trans fatty acids are those which we call usually unhealthy fats. And these are indeed the bad villains among the fatty acids. So let's cover and explain why is it so. Now, fats are essential for our human health, right? Every single cell in our human body does require fat and uses it for the cellular protection. If we do eat healthy fats and the right ratio of omega-3 and omega-6, these fats are used in the cellular membrane for protection of the, each cell, so nothing bad will enter the cell, right? So in such case, is each cellular membrane soft and, and flexible. That will ensure that uh, all nutrients required can enter inside of the cell and all the wastes that are being created during the metabolic processes can leave the cell, right? This exchange will, ens will ensure health, cellular health, and hence we are going to be also healthy, right? Now, on the outside of the cell, each cell has receptors for different micronutrients or different nutrients, let's say, right? So uh, we know that we need glucose, right, for energy production. And glucose can enter the cell only through the particular receptor. The receptors we can call as locks. And the nutrient do have the right key, meaning, for example, that glucose can enter the cell only through glucose receptor and cannot do that through protein or fats, right? Because it doesn't have the right key. And the same is valid for fats. The healthy fats, which are natural from the foods like nuts and seeds, right? Have the right key to enter the lock right to enter inside of the cell. So what happens when we eat majority of unhealthy fats, these trans fats? I have mentioned they're very similar in their structure to, to the healthy fats, but not identical. That means that they do possess very similar key for these fat receptors. And we can imagine that like you manage to put the key into the door lock, but you cannot open the door because it's not identical. It's not fitting perfectly right. And so this is exactly what is happening with the trans fatty acids. They enter, they try to enter the cell. So they get glued and stick on these fat receptors, but cannot go in. And cannot go also out of the lock, right? Meaning that they are blocking the receptor for the healthy fats. So even the healthy fat cannot enter the cell in that moment, which means that eventually the cell would die or would mutate to something which we do not want, such as cancer cell, right? If we eat majority of these unhealthy trans fatty acids, they are then used also as building blocks for our brain cells. Now, in such cell is very stiff in membrane, right? When we eat the healthy fats, I've mentioned that the membrane is soft and flexible, does require, does ensure the exchange in and out. However, if we eat trans fatty acid, this is not the case. And if such brain cell is not soft, it's not flexible, but it's stiff and hard. And that's where we see the substantial increase of uh, dementia 
and Alzheimer's in such a case, right? We would need large amount of fats over a long period of time this to happen. However, it is quite a common practice that people do eat such a bad quality or low quality of food for whatever reasons over a long period of time. And dementia, Alzheimer's and Parkinson is only a few of, of common diseases that are connected to uh, trans fatty acid consumption, right? Other would be obviously obesity, right? Would be cardiovascular diseases, would be endometriosis, would be infertility really, as well as cancer, unfortunately, right? So trans fatty acids have been officially declared as being detrimental to human health, and yet they are being present in our food and we are being sold to us as well. So now we understand the true danger, right? So let's cover where can we find these fats in the food since they are not really being present and the greater extent besides the meat and the, and the dairy and the animal products. But even in these, they are in the very small amount from all fats contained in these foods, only three to 6% are trans fatty acids. And if this was the only way how we would eat such fats, we would not be really had to be worried mostly, right? However, there are other foods that are causing the trouble and how are we eating big amounts, right? Of this kind of unhealthy fats. Now, the number one, how we do eat such fats is through um, oxidation and incorrect the usage of healthy oils, such as olive oil, or even polyunsaturated fats, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, sesame oil, flaxseed oil, right? In the previous video, I have mentioned how important it is to buy good quality of oil and use them properly and correctly, most importantly, right? Not all fats are suitable and fitting for cooking. And this is definitely the case because they oxidate very easily and the oxidation happens also through temperature. Now, if you are not familiar with this topic, you might be willing to perhaps watch the previous video about this topic, about the fats where I explain which are saturated, which are unsaturated and which fats are suitable and fitting for cooking and which are not. And the vegetable uh, oils are oxidating and quite low temperature, already at 130 degrees when it comes to polyunsaturated fats, such as sunflower oil or canola oil, right? And so this temperature is very easily achieved during the cooking. And this is exactly where the trans fatty acids get created. And so how to store them properly, you might be revisiting the previous video of mine. I'm not going to repeat it once again. It's important for this time to know that this is the case, why we should not be using them for cooking because of trans fatty acids creation, right? So that's number one. Number two are these refined polyhydrogenated vegetable oils, which are being sold in, in large plastic bottle, a liter, five liter, 10 liters even, right? They do contain uh, trans fatty acids, right? In certain amount. And that can be anything from 2% to 50%. And that would be varied based on the production and uh, how the production, how the process of production of these oils runs, right? Now, uh, officially, these fats have been declared as health detrimental in US in 2015 already, in, in European Union already, only recently. However, um, good quality of oils, such as sunflower or canola oil, are always sold in the glass dark bottles because of the oxidation, right? And through the oxidation, trans fats creation happens. So if we purchase such low quality of oils sold in plastic bottles in large amount, we can see that they are cost effective in comparison to the other oils and much cheaper. And this is the reason, right? Because of the production 
and um, of um, well long shelf life if you will right this kind this is the second way how we usually consume this this fatty acid because they are you this kind of oils are also being used for cooking and it's not really the ideal way for our health right now uh, the third part or the third way how do we usually consume such fats is through uh, vegetable margarines usually these are produced but from sunflower oil and canola oil in different ratio. This is also stated usually on the package. And uh, exactly with the vegetable oils, the amount of trans fatty acid is different. It can be something to 2% to 50%, depends on the legislation in each particular country, right? Now, um, what is happening? I mean, sunflower and canola oils are vegetable are liquid right in the natural state and they are then heated up to 200 degrees they are many times partially hydrogenated they are bleached they are refined there's all kind of stuff done with these liquid vegetable oils then they are cooled down and they become hard they become solid and that's where we have these vegetable margarines which we are do usually buying a lot of people are buying as i do see when I do the groceries, right? And these do contain trans fatty acids as well. So this is number three. Number four, they since these fats extend the shelf life of products quite substantially, they are used nearly in all processed foods, especially in the baked goods though, right? Now, cookies, pastries, um, cakes which we can buy ready to eat we are packaged with long shelf life with uh, savory chips and crepes and popcorn right these are all containing trans fatty acids by no exception really right so these kind of foods are definitely detrimental to our health i mean trans fatty acid is the only it's not the only part which is not favoring human health containing it's, it's, it's sugar, it's, it's additives, it's preservatives, it's uh, corn syrup or high fructose, different kinds of high fructose syrup. So there are all different kinds of stuff put into these foods in addition to the trans fats which we are talking about today that are not really favoring human health, right? So that's number four. Obviously, since uh, these oils are quite cheap, they are being used in restaurant and all caterings. Uh, They're being used for frying in all of the restaurants, I can guarantee you. In, in uh, airplane catering, in everywhere where you need to achieve cheap food. So they all of time use in, in elderly homes, in hospitals and all different kinds of facilities where you need to produce foods at minimum cost or very low cost, let's say, right? So nearly all processed food or baked go goods in, in, in savory snacks, in restaurants, these kind of oils, these kind of fats are being used because they are cheap or cheaper than the good quality of oils and fats and because they extend the shelf life quite substantially. And yet they are causing us quite a lot of harm on our cellular health and on our overall health as well, right? So this is the major reason why they are uh, connected to um, wh why we are eating them as much. And this is also the reason why we do see such an increase in this kind of diseases in the past, perhaps three, four, five decades with extension of this kind of, uh, with these products being launched into our markets, which including this, uh, this unhealthy low quality of fats into our baking goods, into the foods in general, without being it stated on the ingredient list because producers do not really have to state it if the trans fatty acid does not achieve certain amount, certain percentage of the overall fats in the products, right? Which makes it more difficult for us to understand and to estimate what exactly are we eating, right? But now you know uh, where exactly to look for the trans fatty acids and what foods to avoid. Obviously, 
the more detrimental health condition, as I have mentioned, such as infertility or Alzheimer's, would not really occur when you have when you when you've been eating this kind of foods for three or six months because you didn't know any better, right? This would require a long period of time, meaning years, and a large amount, right? So um, try to avoid it as much as you can. Listen to the previous video about the oils and which, are, which fats are suitable for cooking and why and which are not and why, right? So that's all for now. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, and if you did, please consider subscribing and sharing also with others because this is an important factor for our human health and we need to understand what is what and what to pay attention to or what to avoid. So that's all for now and I'll talk to you soon in another video. Bye.